What music is that I hear? Something to try and make you feel at home. <laughs> Careful and put your hand here, I hear the person in front of me say. I look back and repeat the instruction. It is now only through a small crack I see daylight. You can proceed, I hear a person say. I drop down into the cave and the world around me becomes pitch black. Hey guys, I'm here in Yosemite National Park in California. Let's get technical. You know what, people are giving me weird looks. Let's go back to the studio. Now, when I was in sixth grade, when I looked like this, and yes, that is me, I went on a class trip to Yosemite. That little paragraph you heard at the beginning? That was an excerpt from an essay, or actually it was a vignette, I wrote in sixth grade right after Yosemite. The assignment was to write a reflection on Yosemite. You would write a story of fear and a story of joy. Completely in character, I wrote my fear essay about my camera running out of battery. Yep. And I wrote my joy essay about these things called spider caves. It's cliche and not really well written. I mean, I was in sixth grade, but I think it tells the story well, so it'll be used intermittently. During the trip, all of the adults, you know, the teachers and the tour guides, kept typing up these spider caves. They didn't give us too much background on what the appeal of the caves were, but they did tell us two things. That basically no visitors knew of the spider caves, and that they are pitch black. We did end up going to those spider caves, and it was actually pretty fun. I'm always skeptical when people say pitch black. I always think, eh, but I mean, you can kinda see some light. But no, these were pitch black. So this time around, when I visited in 2017, I was determined to go back and capture the experience of finding Yosemite's mysterious spider caves. I first had to find out where the spider caves were, a pretty crucial part of, well, going to the spider caves. Unfortunately, it had been three years since I was there, and I barely remember what I ate for lunch yesterday, so... I first started with the concierge at our hotel, and she knew nothing about it. She did, however, point me to something called the Indian Caves on the complete opposite side of the park. So I had to scour the internet for any trace of the spider caves. Of course, the caves aren't well known, and there isn't much out there, so I really had to search. I spent every possible second researching, combing through websites, pictures, anything I could find. Why am I even here? There's no Wi-Fi. You know, I even looked through my middle school's photo archive to see if there were any clues in there. Ah, oh, oh yeah, oh wow. Okay, I'm starting to remember. Uh, this is the entrance of the caves right there, uh, this is a picture of me and my friends at the entrance of the caves, and this must be a photo of me exiting the caves. Oh, that's so cool. After hours, days of researching, my dad found a Yahoo Answers page in five seconds. Responding to Cullen, Dot replied with a very detailed three paragraphs. Now, even though Yahoo Answers isn't always the most reliable source, how do I get YouTube to come film me? Everyone knows you need a waiver for that. It was worth a shot. I know where the spider caves are. You get off at stop six off the Yosemite free shuttle, lower Yosemite falls, and walk towards the waterfall on the paved road. So we set out. These are the tent-like things I stayed in when I was here in sixth grade. This was the dining room we ate at every day. And this was the story shop at. Ah, oh, it's weird coming back. I don't remember much, but I do remember, uh, I think it was Millie bought like a plastic snake at the store, and then she put it in someone else's cabin and they freaked out. I don't really know why I remember that. Um, it also might not have been Millie, but it seems like a very Millie thing to do. Some white puffy clouds, a great hot sun, and perfect blue sky. I stopped looking up and started looking around. The pine trees around me are dark green, and there's not a sharp edge on any of the boulders. I'm walking on a ground made of dirt and pine needles. Let's go, Andrew David, our group teacher exclaims. We are going to the caves. The spider caves. The name makes you shudder. The more we walk, the more tired I get. Lots of snow, lots of snow. We kept hiking, but nothing we saw lined up with the description of what Dot the Yahoo person said. Okay, so we think that this might be Grandmother Rock, but there's two problems. One, the Yahoo person said it would be on our left. This is on our right. And two, um, the Yahoo person also said that if she likes to climb up there for lunch. You can't really climb up there for lunch, so. The spider caves are not well known. Only 1% of visitors who come to Yosemite each year know about these caves. The caves aren't on any maps, and if you ask a park ranger about nearby caves, they will not tell you about the spider caves. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're lost. We were seriously about to give up out of confusion and frustration, but then my dad made a discovery. This looks like the only area that could be caves. The other side too much like they have it. 
I think it would be like over there. This looks like it. Oh, wait. I think that's it. Yeah, hold up. Oh, cool. Oh my god, I think this is it. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. There we go. So you can see in like this photo, there's that like big liney rock thing. And like in this photo, there's like the liney rock and the two boulders. And like here, there's like, there's the liney rock thing. And then there's the two boulders there too. It's a POV right here. Or as I like to call them, pretty overt vernacular. <laughs> so it's this really, really tiny hole. I think if you go down here, there's actually like a little sitting area. You're gonna wanna keep the flashlight on because it is incredibly dark. Oh yeah. Oi. Okay, it's very wet. Oh my god, I, oh, wow. It is pitch black without this flashlight. The only thing you can hear is dripping water. It is crazy quiet. It's very peaceful. If you don't believe me about how wet these are, just, just look at that rock. That rock is extremely wet. We are literally right next to the low Yosemite Falls, so I mean, that makes sense, but... There are so many little nooks and crannies in this cave. You can go over there, or over there, there's a spider web, not gonna do that. Hey, they call it Spider Cave because there's like giant hobbit spiders down there? Yeah, that sounds about right. Is there any like, like, fine wine stored down there, or like... <laughs> Oh, uh, I can look around. So far, I've only seen like cheap Pinot Noirs. Are there any nice cave paintings? No, just a lot of water. You see Plato down there? Yosemite Spider Cave is a special kind of cave called a Talus Cave. What is that? Well, to answer that question, we first have to look at how regular caves form. I, I mean, I guess we don't have to, but. Regular caves form because of water, more specifically, dissolving in rainwater. So what happens is, as the rainwater comes down from the sky, it'll pick up some of the carbon dioxide molecules in the air. When the rainwater hits the ground and the ground starts soaking it up, the rainwater will pick up some more carbon in the decaying plants on the ground. This makes rainwater a tiny bit acidic. It turns into a substance that has somewhere between a 5 and a 5.5 on the pH scale. It's about as acidic as a cup of coffee or tea. There's nothing in these cups, by the way. Art is a lie, nothing is real. By the way, if you don't know what the pH scale is, crash course. Anywho, now that the acidic rainwater has steeped into the ground, we've got half of our puzzle. What's the other half? Rock, of course. I mean, you gotta have rock to have a cave. More specifically, rock that will dissolve in rainwater. A couple of different rocks can do this, but the best and most common is limestone. So now we've got our full picture. Rainwater comes down from the sky, turns slightly acidic, dissolves surrounding limestone, and after many years, a cave forms. Great, so now what are talus caves, and how are they different? Well, talus caves are caves made up only of boulders coming together and making a cave. Think of it as nature's pillow fort. Like this, but with rocks. Talus caves can be very, very tiny, so much so humans can't even go through them, or huge and extensive, like the spider caves. Okay, it's time to come out. Oh, I said I need any help. I was thinking, <laughs> well, I'm not exactly thinking about filming. <laughs> Overall, Dad, do you think this metal case were cool? I thought it was very cool. It was off the beaten track at Yosemite. Nice! <laughs> cool. <laughs> So what did I learn? Well, besides all that cave stuff, I learned that sometimes you have to go off the beaten path to find the coolest treasures. There are hidden beauties everywhere. To find them, you just gotta spend a little bit of time and a little bit of energy. It takes some effort to adventure the rarely adventured, but in the end, it's totally worth it. After a short talk, we exit the spider caves. That's it? I question? Yep, Andrew replied. I wish I could go again. Joy is an emotional barometer. It tells us if we should do something or not. Feeling joy means you're on the right track. Joy is a good thing. On a single leg. You shall not pass! <laughs> <laughs>
That's great. Hey guys, it's been a crazy couple of weeks uh, since the Tom Scott video came out. I've had both Huffington Post and Mashable articles written about me, which is incredible and really crazy. I've also gotten some more fan art, which is extremely, really kind that y'all will send that to me. Thank you, I'm very touched. I'll feature the fan art sent to me during these end screen things. Here's the first one, it's phenomenal. Make sure to follow my Instagram. See you next time.